doing happy tuesday actually it's tuesday i meant to intro yesterday and i forgot so my bad so yeah tuesday now and i've had a, a very productive day and by that i mean i did one thing that i had to do but it's fine <laughs> uh yeah i had to go and get blood work done today um it's been just about six months since starting tea so my doctor wanted to do a check-in and see how my uh my blood work is doing so i had to go and get that and i was very brave and didn't cry so for a reward i went to the bookstore and also to the bakery <laughs> so but first i went to the library and i returned the big stack of books that i had but i also picked up paint the devils by margaret owen this is the sequel to a book that i read and liked <laughs> I don't know. Probably on here actually. Hold on. Little Thieves. Sequel to Little Thieves. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forget a lot of the details with that book, so hopefully I can find a synopsis online before I start this one. This will probably be for October, but I at least have it now. And then I went to the bookstore after my, my, my blood work and I got too many things. Um, so I picked up The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo. I'm honestly like, I don't think I even had this one on my TBR on Goodreads because like I wasn't really planning on reading it. I, I think it was like a Great Gatsby sort of thing with like a touch of magic to it and I've heard very like meh things about it. So I wasn't overly interested in it but I saw it there for like a couple bucks and I also had credits there so all these books that I bought today I didn't have to pay for. If it's free then I might as well just pick it up so um, I got this one and I do want to read more of this author's backlist as well too so figured I would give it a try and for free why not? I also picked up Pandora by Anne Rice. I haven't read anything by Anne Rice but I do want to get, get into her works and I was really hoping to find the the main one the interview with the vampire but they didn't have it there but they did have this and it's very pretty so I figured I would uh, give, give that one a try. Like look at the cover too it's really cool bunch of cool stuff on there but um but yeah so I got this one not really sure what it's about I think I read I like briefly skimmed the synopsis um and it kind of gave me uh Diary of Blood vibes a little bit yeah, it's basically about a very old like couple thousand year old vampire being interviewed about her life and how she's been and what she's been up to for like 2,000 years. Sounds great. Can't wait to try this author. And then I picked up um, Children of Time and what are you called? Children of Ruin by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I did only intend to get book one. <laughs> I swear I was carrying book two and when I got to the desk I did ask like can I just see how many credits I have before I decide uh, and then she just started like bringing it through and gave me a total and I'm like okay I was like too anxious to tell her that like I only wanted the one and I just like wanted to see how much it would be but um I ended up with both so here we are this is what happens when you go shopping with anxiety <laughs> but yeah I got these ones this one was was already on my TBR and then actually somebody that I matched with on Bumble recently our conversation went basically nowhere but I did at least get from that chat that uh, they were reading this book and it has sentient space spiders in it, which I need in my life. So I want to read this real bad now. <laughs> then I went to the bakery as well and I got too many things. I was going for one thing and I got seven. <laughs> Not all to have right now, just to kind of snack on throughout like today and tomorrow. But also I wouldn't be surprised if they were all gone by the end of the night. <laughs> I like pastries, okay? But yeah, so that's been my day so far. And then, oh, I did also, I finished Sunbringer yesterday by Hannah Kaner. I, I brought it back to the library today. It was like one point shy of being a four star. So I'm just gonna call it a four star. It was fantastic. That was such a good book. I really, really enjoyed that one. The last book of that series is going to be fucking epic. And <laughs> I can't wait to get to it. I think it comes out in March of next year. So hopefully I don't forget everything that happened in, in, the, in these last two books before that one comes 
comes out. But yes, I finished that one up. And then last night I read volumes one and two of Something is Killing the Children. They were fine. I gave them both three stars. I don't think I'm going to continue on with the series. It's good. It's just like not good enough for me to want to read like seven volumes of it so but yeah it was fine uh i didn't dislike it this one is about a small town where a bunch of kids have gone missing and a whole bunch have have, have turned up dead and they're like chewed through like they have been like devoured partially uh and people are like what the fuck is happening and this monster hunter comes to town and she's like yeah so y'all have monsters actually sorry about it and her job is to get rid of it but um yeah, no, it was good. I liked the art style. The characters were fine. Um, I liked the monsters. They were pretty cool. But yeah, I just don't really care enough to continue with it. So I'll probably just leave it at the, at the first two volumes and call it a day. But, and then I'm currently reading the September House. Can't think of the author as per usual. Um, this one's not part of my Aurelium TBR, but due to the title, I do want to read it in September. I thought that would be a nice Thing to read for this month so i just picked that one up over over audiobook considering i'm almost done my Aurelium tbr i kind of have some extra space to read what to read whatever i want to but yeah i'm not i'm kind of not liking the fact that the Aurelium readathon is in september this year because like september and october are my like spooky horror book time and i don't really want to be reading like a set tbr right now but i don't want to not do Aurelium, so you know, like normally for most years, if I finish my Aurelium TBR early, I just go through and like read other books for the rest of the prompts. But I think this year I'm just going to finish my set TBR for that and then go into my like fall reading. But anyways, yeah, so the September House. This one's really cool. If you are a fan of Crimson Peak, the movie, I think you will love this book. It's about this couple in like their mid to late 20s and they buy a house kind of on a whim because it's beautiful. And like the real estate agent is trying to be like, hey, so like the murders plural and they were like it's fine it's totally okay um and then they move in and uh yeah every september the walls start to bleed and there's shrieking in the attic and something is living in the basement and there's a whole bunch of fucked up things and the book opens uh, i think their third september in the house where the husband is like fuck this i'm out and the wife is like I'm good. I'm gonna stay. This is my home and no one will make me leave. So the husband's missing and, she, and she's just like, everything is fine. <laughs> so yeah, I'm reading that one right now and very much enjoying it so far. It has that dark humor that I've been trying to find recently. So loving that one so far. I'm not very far into it yet, but I'll be reading some more of it later on. Oh, and then I did also have a couple of DNFs last night as well too. I DNFed, what's it called? How Rory Thorne destroyed the multiverse. Or something like that i don't know the pictures here i'm so sad about this one because this is like right up my alley i love multiverse stuff and space operas and like this sounded like it would be, it would have been perfectly my book but i had to start this book over three separate times because i just was not paying attention to it at all and then yeah, i got about 15 percent of the way through and i was just like i don't know what's happening i don't care about any of these characters or anything that's happening so it was a dnf for me and then i also dnf'd uh some desperate glory i think by emily tesh also sat about because i do like this author i read their green hollow duology i think it was called a couple years ago and loved that one so i was looking forward to a space opera from them as well but sadly did not give a fuck about it this one is like one of those books where like I started it and within 2% I'm like yeah not for me <laughs> like it was a it was a very quick DNF so it is what it is but yeah so that is the updates for right now um I'm going to go sit on the couch with my cat and do some reading man you know how you take a nap by accident yeah <laughs> good morning it's like 6 30 in the evening i don't know why i said good morning i am so tired oh my god it's my last day of vacation i don't know if i've mentioned that i've been on vacation for the last week <laughs> i had like a, a really brief three hour shift on sunday because there was nobody else available to close so i had to go in um but aside from that i've been on vacation since thursday last week so but yeah, it's my last day of vacation and I'm sad about it and I wish that I could be on vacation forever, but I can't be, so it is what it is. Here comes the boy. Hi. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was editing last week's vlog and I realized that I didn't actually talk about a book that I read last week. I read Thirsty Mermaids by Kat Lee, the uh, graphic novel, which like, I feel like I talked about it somewhere. I don't know if I just like forgot to put the clip in but I looked through my camera roll and I didn't see it in there so I guess maybe I dreamed that I talked about it but 
Um, it's not in the blog at least. So but yeah, I read Thirst to Mermaids last week and it was fantastic. I forget what I gave it right now, but I'll leave it on the screen with whatever I gave. This one was a... Oh, oh my god. Oh god. Fuck. This one is a graphic novel about three mermaids who they're super drunk one night at a shipwreck that they found. They run out of alcohol and they're like, let's use a spell and turn human and go and find more alcohol. So they do that and get fucking plastered. And then the next morning realize that they actually don't know how to turn back to human. So they have to pretend to be human for a little bit and try and figure out how to get back to being mermaids. And they end up staying at the bartender's house. This was adorable. And like, I thought that it was gonna just be funny, but there was actually like way more to it than that. Lots to do with like family and body dysmorphia and feeling out of place and lost. Big themes of like found family and like found family being more important than your blood family. Uh, it was actually like a really nice graphic novel. I thought it was very sweet. Yeah, it was fantastic. I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I gave it four stars. I think. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've also read Snapdragon by this author and I also loved that one too. So yeah, definitely recommend that one if you are uh, looking for a, a fun graphic novel to read. It was really, really funny and surprisingly heartwarming. So good time. But yeah, so that was last week. And then just before taking my nap, I finished listening to the audiobook for the September House. And I haven't, I haven't put it through Kappa yet, so I have no idea what my rating is going to be. I'm probably going to be like a three star, which like isn't a bad rating. I, I enjoyed most of it. I loved how the ghosts were portrayed and just like a whole, I loved the vast majority of it. And I was going to give it like a three and a half or a four, but I have to take it down just a little bit for um just because of the ending i found was very unsatisfying the whole like like the climax was great but i feel like the book ended at a place where it shouldn't have like i just wish that there were like three more pages to just explain like what happened afterwards <laughs> i'm not gonna spoil it obviously but like things happen that there should be a pretty significant afterwards you know like, i don't know how to explain that just like legally like there should have been things happening after the fact and it just kind of ends and i'm like what what happens though it just was not very satisfying i had so many questions of like what's going to happen to these characters after this is all said and done that was just kind of like fully left unanswered also too i'm not sure if i misheard or if there's just, just like a plot hole but i could swear at the beginning of this book the main character said that she and her husband were in their like mid to late 20s when they bought this house and they'd only lived there for three years. That was in the first chapter and I, I distinctly remember this because I was like, oh cool, they're like my age, that's cool. But then a few chapters in, she's talking about like having salt and pepper hair and having like an adult daughter. And I'm like, what? Like I could swear that she said that they were like 24, 25 when they bought the house. I'm like, how do you have like a 30 year old daughter. Did I just mishear it? Was it a plot hole or was that intentional? Because like time does play an element in this book with like time not quite feeling real and like losing time really often. So I'm like, did the main character think that she was 24 or 25 when she bought the house, but she was actually much older or, or was she 24, 25 when, when they bought the house? And she thinks that she's only been here for three years, but she's actually been here for much longer. Not really sure. I feel like it was just a mistake, but or I could have misheard it as well. That's also a very real possibility, but but yeah, I feel like I didn't hear that wrong, but maybe I did. I don't know. And I'm too lazy to go back and find out. So either way, I did like this one. It was definitely a fantastic read and I do recommend it. I just had to dock out those extra little points just because I had so many questions at the end that aren't going to get answered. So definitely recommend for a really good like haunted house story very like gruesome grotesque monsters hanging around definitely a good one and i think i was saying before that if you like crimson peak you will love this one it had such similar vibes to that just with a more modern setting and more dark humor in it imagery in it very similar to crimson peak so i do recommend that one and then last night i did also start reading evocation by st gibson and so far i'm very much enjoying it I got about 10% in last night and I'm going to read some more of that today if I can stay awake long enough at least but I'm trying to convince myself to, to go to the gym as well but like no <laughs> maybe I'm not gonna say no yet I might go later on but probably not which is I'm mad at myself for because I, I told myself that like 
I have six days off from work, like go go to the gym, try and get into the habit of going. And then I haven't gone a single time, so oops. But no, I did a whole bunch of like errands today. I went to like four different stores, got a bunch of things done. I was very productive and it was hot and I was sweaty and I've also been awake since 5.30 in the morning. So I'm tired, but I also haven't like moved my body aside from walking around today doing errands well granted i also today did errands yesterday and i did a bunch of walking around for that too so i've at least left the house <laughs> but no i do want to start going to the gym because i'm trying to like i want to be buff and it's still like early days of testosterone and i've read that it's so much easier to build muscle in your first year of being on t and i'm already halfway through that so i do want to go while it's still like apparently super easy for me to build muscle because like i want to be a beefy boy. <laughs> Anyways, I doubt that I'm gonna go, but I have at least the mindset that I will. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the plans for tonight, either reading or gym or both. Preferably both would be ideal. I do also need to edit a YouTube video because I have a couple that I filmed last week that I haven't edited yet. I might do that tonight. I might do it tomorrow though. We'll see. But yeah, I am going to go and make some dinner and yeah, we'll see where the night goes. I, I'm not going to the gym. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> at least reading and maybe YouTube editing will be done tonight. <laughs> so it's still productive. tree here and uh it's tall enough that i can rest my phone here so different angles look at that <laughs> i had a thought there was a reason i was coming to update and i forget what it was oh okay so <laughs> uh two books i read a bit more of evocation last night by st gibson i'm about 25 percent of the way through right now i am loving this one i don't think i talked about what it's actually about last night this one is a like paranormal fantasy kind of thing that has to do with these two guys who are in a like a cult society type of thing. They're both very much involved in the supernatural and like summoning demons and rituals and that kind of thing. They're also exes and like super awkward. I read from the synopsis that it's going to turn into a like polyamorous throuple, I'm pretty sure. So I can't wait to see when that happens. That, that's going to be really fun. The premise of this one is that, is that the one guy is like, I don't know if he gets possessed by some sort of demon or if like a demon is hunting him, something like that, but he needs his ex's help to deal with that. So that's the gist of what's happening in this book. And so far it's fantastic. I really can't wait to get more into it and see where it goes. And then the this morning I also started reading Rise and Divine by Lana Harper. It's the fifth book in the Paybacks of Witch series. It's a series called The Witches of Thistle Grove or is that a different series? I think that's this one. Either way it's book five and I'm also loving it. Definitely not going to be my favorite in this series but it's still enjoyable and I'm flying through it. I'm already about 40% of the way through. I just had the audiobook going while I was like making breakfast and that kind of thing. Kind of hard to like talk about what it's about because it's the fifth book in the series and there's a whole bunch of like intertwined relationships and that kind of thing. But the series as a whole takes place in this town that was founded by four witch families and a bunch of like non-witches also live there but they they have everything glamoured. Picture like Halloween town but make it witches. Hi buddy. Tony says hello. <laughs> everything is like witch themed. They're very open about the fact that they're witches but they rely on people just assuming that it's all like new agey like not real uh and just like a bit of like tourist fun it's a fantastic series it's a very light-hearted kind of thing there's still lots of like great scenes and like emotional moments to it as well uh, but it's a really easy read to just fly through i'll probably finish it by the end of the day so can't wait to see where this one goes i don't know if there's gonna be more in this series after this well i, I hope there is I, I could honestly just stay in this town forever so hopefully she'll keep writing more but um yeah, this is the newest release. It was just released a few weeks ago. So look at me being on top of my like series releases. Doing well. But anyways, I it's like noon right now. I have to leave for work in like an hour and a bit. So I do want to try and edit at least part of a video. I was going to last night and I 
didn't do that so um yeah last night ended up being a little bit of reading but mostly just kind of staring off into space so <laughs> a lot of doom scrolling last night yeah i'm gonna try and get at least a little bit of that video edited and then get ready for work and um yeah we'll go from there so y'all i had to fire someone today <laughs> oh man it's not my first time firing someone but it was my first time firing somebody in person the last time that i did it it was over the phone so it was way easier um <laughs> Yeah, there was nothing in my life more uncomfortable than sitting in awkward silence while the person I just fired packed up their shit. <laughs> Man, that sucked. <laughs> this person is somebody that my former boss and I have been trying to get rid of for so long and we were finally able to, to let her go. So we're, we're very happy with this. And I'm actually on my way to go and get a celebratory shot with my old boss so <laughs> oh god the joys of being a manager hi good morning um i do have reading updates i finished rise and divine but i don't have time to talk about it so I'll, i will talk about that one later on but i'm so excited so um indigo they're doing a like 10,000 book giveaway thing. I'm not really sure why. The CEO picked out four of her favorite books and they're giving away a bunch of copies of them. And one of the four books that I can choose from is Braid and Sweetgrass. So I'm getting a very early start to my day. <laughs> the mall where the Indigo is opens at nine and I have to be at my store for 9.45. So I should hopefully be able to get there on time and get my book and maybe a couple of other things that I wanna get move we'll see and then i should be able to get to work on time fingers crossed so yeah i'm getting a very early start to my day today not that much earlier i'm normally awake by like 7 45 i woke up at seven o'clock instead so it's not that much earlier but still i will do anything for free books so waking up early is no problem <laughs> Hey, hi, happy Monday. How you guys doing? Yeah, so I was successful in my... And hi, Tony. Hi. Hi, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I was successful in my free book endeavor. I went and I got Braiding Sweet Grass for free from Indigo. I was fourth in line and they sold out in less than three minutes. So, <laughs> like of all the books that they had out of the four to choose from, they were all gone in less than three minutes. So. I'm very glad that I got there early and I got my free book, so I love that. And then I was also planning, like I was going there intending to buy Celestial Monsters, which I did indeed buy, and I'm so happy to have this book in my hands. It is beautiful as well. I can't wait to read this one. I'm planning on rereading The Sunbearer Trials before getting to this one, so I'll be doing that hopefully soon. But um, yeah, I can't wait for it. And then... I maybe bought a couple other things. I couldn't say no. Look how pretty it is though. Like, look at that. Like, come on. But the best part. Are you ready? <sighs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. There was no way that I couldn't not get this. So, I got it. <laughs> I definitely didn't need to. 
but I did because like I'm, I was reading it over ebook and audiobook but now I also have it in physical book so I can read the physical book and the audiobook also there's a bookmark a little ribbon bookmark um but yeah I, I am still reading this one as well too I am right now I'm on page 90 um so I'm loving it so far and I'm like I already knew that I was gonna love it so I figured I might as well just add it to the collection I want to get all of S.T. Gibson's books at some point speaking of which um oops <laughs> I also got an, an education in malice so yeah very happy about it I want to read this one in October so I had to get it I had to have it I could not <laughs> so yeah that was my that was my book buying adventure from the other day I bought too many books this week I have acquired eight new books just this week so oopsies <laughs> I totally have space on my shelf for all these books I'll find space for it. <laughs> Otherwise, um, so yeah, I do have reading updates as well too. So like I said, I'm reading Evocation. I'm on page 90. Loving that one so far. I also finished Rise and Divine by Lana Harper. So now I only have one more book to read for my Aurelium prompts that I have to get through. So I'm doing great for the readathon. <laughs> yeah, so Rise and Divine, I gave four stars. I loved it. It was great. Definitely was not my favorite in the series. I found the characters and just the like relationship to be less compelling than in past books, but I did really like the plot surrounding the romance. I'm just not huge on like second chance romance. I'm kind of of the opinion that like if you broke up, you broke up for a reason. I'm just the kind of person that like I would never get back together with somebody. So for me, I don't really enjoy second chance romances but I did still like this one I love the surrounding plot the whole like what, what do you call it soul eater or whatever she eats demons it's cool as fuck yeah it was like that part was really cool and I liked everything else about it so yeah four stars really enjoyed that one and then I also ended up reading Garlic and the Witch by Brie Paulson it's a sequel to Garlic and the Vampire this was so sweet it's a cute little middle grade graphic novel. I'm not a huge fan of middle grade books anymore but I do still really enjoy middle grade graphic novels and this one was adorable and I really liked it and I gave it also four stars. I wish it, that it was a bit longer but I do still love these books so much. They're so sweet and I love them so yeah four stars for that one. I think that's really it in terms of updating right now. I did start a book this morning but I'll talk about that in in next week's vlog so yeah I think that'll do it for this week then so thank you for watching and I will catch you guys later on bye